All right, this is Boxing with the Truth, and I am the Truth. It's May 23rd, 2015, and today we have World Heavyweight Champion Martha the Shadow Salazar. How you doing today? Very good by yourself. Thank you for having me. No problem. Uh, thank you for taking time to do it. Uh, it's not very often that um, we hear about the, the female boxing heavyweights, so I'm anxious to talk to you about that a little bit. Um, I know the, the male heavyweights used to be the big draw in boxing, and I think that the female heavyweights kind of get shunned, don't you? Yes, I believe so. And, uh, you know, sometimes even in our, our fights, when we fight with the, you know, together with the men, um, sometimes the women take over. And uh, after we, the heavyweights are done with the fights, most of the people just walk out, you know. So I don't understand why we don't get as much publicity as the male heavyweights, you know. I don't understand it either. And I want to go down a list of uh, some titles and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you hold a, Do you hold a WBC right now? A WIBF yeah. world title, um, the, the heavyweight champion, and a WBE yeah. heavyweight champion, and a WBE super heavyweight champion title, right? Yes, correct. Okay, and um, forgive me for mentioning your age, but the reason I'm bringing this up is you actually are 45 years old, right? Yeah, and 45. But, but the reason I'm bringing that up is because look at all the accomplishments you have. You, your pro debut was in 2001. You've been a pro for 14 years, and you're still yeah. and you're still going strong. Yeah, man. I mean, in my, uh, you know, how I feel is like uh, 45 is just a number. It depends how you feel, how your body feels, and how fast you recoup after a fight. You know, so right now I'm 45, but I feel like I'm 30. You know, so I'm gonna keep going until there's females out there that want to fight me that want to call themselves uh, world champions, but they haven't fought the best. Okay, and your record is actually 13 wins, 3 knockouts, 4 losses, right? Yes, correct. Okay, but you actually started as a kickboxer before a boxer, correct? Yes, I was a kickboxer, that's how I started. Um, after that, and I met this trainer, which his name is uh, Donovan Puller, but she was my first trainer in... He told me to come back and start boxing because there was no, like always, there's not enough heavyweight women out there to to fight with. So I tried it, you know, and it went pretty good as I transitioned to, to boxing. Okay, and I also want to mention, you're actually a Mexican fighter. So I want to ask you, why do you think that the female fighters get more attention actually in Mexico if they fight over there than they do in the U.S.? You know, I asked that same question myself, and um, I still haven't figured it out, and I think, I'm just thinking and assuming that it's because the promoters over there are better than the ones that be over here in California, in the United States, which is kind of sad, you know, because there's more money in the United States than it is in Mexico, but when it comes to boxing, they, they treat their, their fighters, their female fighters, right, you know? They're, they're paying correct and everything, not as much as the men, but they still get a little bit more money than we do over here in the United States. And, and let's talk about that. Why is it still after females have been around for so many years that they're only starting to get the attention that they deserve over the last few years, but they're still not getting the money they deserve? And well, I asked that one of the promoters, and they said that they, they, we, don't, we can't bring money like, uh, like the males you know, like the Pacquiao and all of them, they bring the crowd in. But, you know, I was telling them, listen, but you guys haven't really given us a chance to to put to all you promoters that have the money to put these kind of shows to uh, try us out. Then what do you want us to do? We want You want us to sell tickets? We'll sell tickets. We'll bring the people. Trust us. We'll bring the people in. But you guys got to give us a chance, you know? And the last show that I did is that I saw for the WBC, that show was sold out. There was people outside. They oversold the show. And that tells you that we can bring people. Us women, the heavyweights, we can bring people into the into the show and make too money. But we still, we bring in the money, but then we don't get paid what we're supposed to, you know? Yeah, how can they expect you to bring in the money when they're not promoting you right as far as giving you more TV time, giving you main events on TV, giving you pay-per-view on TV, putting up billboards of the women fights? They they can't make money off something they're not promoting properly. Exactly. 
Exactly. So we need somebody that's going to step up and, and try to, you know, try to help us out, which, you know, some some of the promoters like Bonta Gutierrez that is helping us as females, uh, uh, fighters, to kind of promote little by little and try to see if we can make it out there and, and, and start making the big money. I know that we're not going to make that kind of money, but maybe the, the younger ones that are coming up, maybe they'll get a chance to make that kind of money, you know? Okay, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, now that like Al Heyman and Greg Cohen, they're bringing the, the boxing back to the national TV networks and stuff. Do you see some of these younger female fighters that are coming up and uh, the the names um, like the the Serrano sisters, the the Heather Hardy, um, like uh, like we just talked about a minute ago, um, the Noemi um, Vasquez. Do you see these guys possibly getting some shots on on the TV? Maybe some main events on some of these cards. Uh, you know, they do have a chance. I mean, you know, they're beautiful women, and, and, and most of the time, men want to see that, too. At the same time, you know, see nice and, and beautiful bodies. So, yeah, I think they, they'll get a chance. I mean, I don't know if they'll get the chance soon, but, you know, it's getting. I think it's getting there to where they're going to put it on TV. And then, I mean, right now they do it on online or some of them, you know, that we can do it. We can watch them, but do an actual TV pay-per-view. It's going to take a little minute. I mean, I find a pay-per-view, too. I was watching uh, Tele Futura, you know. So uh, I've been in some of the shows, but you still don't get the kind of money that you think you're going to get even if you're on a, on a show like that, you know, for pay-per-view. And it just depends on the promoter that you're with, if some promoter signs you and try to help you out. But other than that, there's no way you can make that much money. And I, I just want to bring this up real quick. Uh, Chevelle Halbeck brought this to my attention that no female uh, fighters have ever been on HBO. Why do you think that is? Why won't HBO give you guys the attention that you deserve? Man, uh, you know what? On that question, I have no, I, don't, I don't know how they work and all that. And you know, most of the time, they focus on the males that that's bringing the money. And in this world nowadays, it's all about money. How much can you bring? If can you bring money to for them to make money? You know, so. On HBO, uh, you know, I can't really say when or if it's going to happen, you know? Okay, on another note, I know you fought Von the Ward three times. So, I, I guess, and I know you would have loved to win that world title off of her. So, yeah. but I mean, it, you did win it. So, I mean, that is something. But at, when you look back at your entire career, is that the one thing that's going to eat at you, the fact that you didn't win the world title off of her? Uh, you know, in the beginning it was, but then I was like, okay, so I didn't win it with her. I tried three times. She never wanted to fight outside her hometown. And I, I like that. I like to go out there and prove people wrong. And I know I won the first time that we met on those four rounds, but they gave it to her because, you know, it was a, she was a champion. The, the other two times, I think I was, you know, I felt like I, I won, but then I wasn't that experienced. So I think I got that shot at the for the world title kind of soon, you know? But then it was good because I didn't, there was not that many women out there to fight as a heavyweight. Okay. And let's talk about that a little bit. As, as a female heavyweight, is that is that coming along more? Is there more heavyweight female fighters out there or is there still just a handful and that's why nobody really hears about them? Well, I mean, you know, the South are, the heavyweights are coming up, they're already been in the game, they're coming out of the retirement and, and trying to get in there too, you know, since I became, I uh, uh, got out of retirement, uh, other other fighters are trying to get back in there again, get out of retirement, um, there's, uh, you know, and normally, there's about 20 girls out there that are heavyweights that are also, they don't have a handful of them that are coming up that, you know, that would like to fight, but they won't let them because, you know, they don't have the experience. But I always try to fight the, the first top six, you know, whoever's on the top. And uh, most of the time, these women don't want to fight me for whatever reason. I got to give props to uh, Tanji uh, Daniels that, you know, she stepped up and had us I won my title, too, in, in November. But this other girl, like Sonia Lamarowski, that, uh, you know, I fought her the first time when I came out of retirement, beat her. Um, she talked a lot of smack, and then after that, then I told her that I'd go to her hometown and, and fight even in her backyard. All she got a thing that was a, a dinner with a steak, and uh, <laughs> and she still don't want to do it. You know, I said, just give me a steak, man. That's all I need, and we can fight anywhere, anywhere you want. 
<laughs> and she doesn't want to do it. So then, you know, we'll have Lisa from Australia. Uh, they call me for it, but, you know, it was only giving me like six days to uh, to get there and stay there, which is kind of crazy. I told them to give me two weeks at least. And uh, they didn't want to do it. So, yeah. Just to both of you, the number one right now, just because you won the, the IPL game with, uh, I think she fought uh, at the Rivers. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to be the number one now. Do you, do you uh do you ha do you have anything in the works right now for this summer? Is anything coming up for you? Uh right now um uh, finally uh, uh Lady Lady Ramsky is coming out and fighting today tonight. And uh we talked about the the winner of the fight should be fighting me to defend my title, my WBC. So we'll see who wins and we'll see if they just like they said that they want to fight before we lose there. Which is too, you know? Okay, um... Can, say, most of the time we say everything talks, but then nothing happens, you know, nothing happens. <laughs> Can you tell me what the beautiful Brawlers boxing is? Yeah, beautiful Brawlers, we've been doing it for uh past six years, and uh, this year, we normally we get the best in the country. Yeah, the, 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 the best in the country, the uh, Junior Olympics, and all those people that won. <laughs> The one titles and all the best, and they appreciate. It. And we get them together. We we set them up with uh, somebody that's at the same level, the same age and, and weight, and uh, and we just have them, you know, get in there and show their skills and and just see who's the the best of the best. And uh, this year we actually have people from Canada, they come from a lot of other places, you know, around the world, and uh, hopefully Blanca. I mean, I have. I haven't heard anything specifically on who's coming, but, you know, everybody wants to be in that show from all over the world now. And we're like, wow. From one show, to just make it to be like a home, kind of like a family thing, it turned out to be a big show, and now it's turned into around the world that want to come and then fight for this show. So now that's amateurs and pros, right? I know this is just amateurs. Just amateurs? All amateurs. Yes, all, all women, only women, a little kids up until like uh, age of 10 and uh, he was like 32 years old. So, you know, even heavyweight, super heavyweight, if they're good and they got good skills and they're on the show, yeah. Okay, did you, uh, do you have any superstitions or rituals or habits that you do before a fight? Um, not, not really, all I do is just be myself, I know that uh, once I train, I say every time I train 110%, I really don't look into who is, who's going to be my opponent, once I know I have an opponent, I train the 110% all the time, and then just show what I got in the, in the ring, and I never make excuses, if I win, I win, lose, lose, you know I train my hardest, and that's the only thing I do. Okay, something. Tell me something that your boxing fans don't know about you. Oh yeah, that um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they don't know that I used to play basketball and I played basketball for college and I I was the old stage guard in 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 college of basketball and I was the center. A lot of people don't know that my my number one sport was basketball back in the days before before kickboxing and boxing. Okay, that's interesting. I I had no idea either. So, <laughs> so that's a good one that nobody brings up ever. Nobody knows. So you're the first one that I told that I used to play basketball and I was an old star in in college. Okay. Um. Who are your influences throughout your boxing career, female or male? Uh, for male, it'll be who is Chavez. Yeah, I used to like how he. Just got people with those liver shots, you know. And on the women's side, um, it, um, it was a uh, kickboxer. Thing on that was Kathy Long, I believe. Not quite sure, but I saw the TV and I saw her. She just not this girl. I was just one kick. Oh. And uh, from there, I, I started liking uh, kickboxing. That's why I started in there too. Besides that, I got jumped by you know some other girls. <laughs> and and tell me, outside of your whole life of boxing, what, what do you do outside of boxing that, that helps you uh, just relax like a favorite activity? Um, just 
years I thought about it, and I actually like the way it works. It's not about work, and I, you know, with my, my stepdaughter, and we just go out and have a little fun riding and brush our horse and, uh, you know, a quality time with me and her and our horses. Did you say riding horses? Yes, I ride horses too. <laughs> oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, so this is going to be the last question, and then I'm going to have you say something to your fans. So overall, I mean, you've had a pretty long career. I mean, 14 years as a pro, you were a kickboxer before that. So when, uh, how has boxing overall affected your life? Um, boxing has actually been pretty good to me. Um, it made me a stronger person, a stronger woman. You know, um, and also be able to, to give back to the community to help other kids and, and try to save kids that are in trouble and, and they like to fight outside in the streets and try to bring them in and, and teach them boxing so they can get out of the street and, and you know, like, every tell them, listen, you like to you like to fight out in the street, you know, why don't you come and, and play it, uh, um, practice boxing and you'll get to fight. Get whoever you want in there, you know, in your own weight with skills. You'll be comfortable, you don't get in trouble or anything like that, and, and then you'll be fine. And that's one of the things that boxing has brought to my life about helping other kids, you know? Okay. Um, do you have anything to say to your supporters and your fans throughout your career? Yeah, I just want to thank all my fans that keep supporting me and still try to watch the heavyweights, you know, women heavyweights, and, uh, and every time they see me or they hear me on the radio, they always ask me, what is your next? Alright, and with that, the truth has spoken.